So what we did here, and somebody said, well, can you correct them? And I did give a correction, so you'll see how I, I use punishment. Um, but it doesn't work. It's not effective. Okay, it's not there. And you'll see what we, what we actually did. We, we ended up using an air horn. We made sure all the dogs present, though, however, um, were not noise sensitive. And if Tucker gave him a correction, would he not done? Tucker will not correct him. That's the problem. What if a dog, what if there was a dog in here that would correct him? We're, we're going to do that. Bringing, yeah, it's just really allowing him to practice this behavior yeah, more yeah. and more and more. It's, it's for the workshop. So is, so there it is. That. Up, he just mounting. Oh, he's not allowed, he's not allowed to play. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Right <laughs> away. So what he did with a 15 dog. No, here's this, for this the is a female play. Aussie here who's not going to take any BS from him. So essentially, he's just a bully dog. And you see, he checked her out. He'll be back, though. <laughs> and also, when she's playing, she doesn't want to be bothered. So the boxer's been removed right now. <laughs> How would he do with patches? Patches wouldn't give it. Wouldn't. I don't know. Look at the look. Don't think about it. <laughs> I have eyes in the back of my head, Buster. <laughs> well, I guess that one didn't work. <laughs> You see, he, he's, a, he, he's a soft dog. when he's told off? I mean, when he's told off. And I, I, I feel badly for him. Billy and Lynn are friends. It would be nice if Tucker was telling off. Oh, was he neutered young? Eh, he's seven, eight months. <laughs> Let's bring the Goldens in now. He does not mount people, no. Now we bring in the, the, the some two golden, a female and a male. Ted, it must be your cologne. <laughs> look where look where his nose is. He has one thing on his mind. Now, he already has been told off by this collie mix here, so you notice he hasn't gone to her. I think he's learned to respect females, too. But see, there's no interaction with the dogs. It was a really soft female. She's a pretty soft female, though, and he hasn't gone up to her yet. I got an idea. Keep her around the and his owner is in there right now, and he is not. This is the first well, time he's he actually gone Lance, over to the owner, he, he knows, he but he still didn't look at him. A lot of pacing here. So I thought for a second, hmm, will he play? Smart female rolls over. <laughs> So give some time to at least check her out. But the unfortunate thing is, I think if she if she were to get up, he would just mount. He's waiting for it. Look, get up, get up. See him elevating his chest already. No fun in that, is it? She's smart too. She knows. <laughs> She's giving very nice, and she would like to play with him, but she, cause she obviously can sense this is he, he doesn't want to play. Let's bring Tucker. Wait, I'll figure it out. Just see now with Tucker. So he heads for the male golden. Leaving stars in or taking them out? Oh, okay. Barrel. <laughs> it, it, it's, it is sad, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, the boxer's brought back in. No, no. Okay, it's not about the male golden here. Get off. Get off. Now get off. Look at Tucker. Thanks, Pia. <laughs> Stop it. 
Now, do you think that had any effect on them? <laughs> That's when they said, well, what if you just correct them? Okay, I'll show you the correction. It's not going to work. <laughs> No. So now we start the horn. <laughs> so the second he gets on him, we're going to blast the horn. And he's not, he is not sound sensitive. It, it, it's, it, it's just startling him and no, the, none of the other dogs are anxious about the horn. So you have to be very careful about that. Good boy. All behavior suppressed. <laughs> he does a lot of marking when he's around other dogs too. And lots of scratching. Front legs, back legs. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect timing. What do you think, Mike? Look, me. <laughs> Look, where's that horn come? Where's that noise coming from? So w what we eventually did was we had to move it around. Mm, interesting behavior. <laughs> but stressed, right? Definitely stressed. I'm not sure what to do. You can see him start to get aroused there. And he's just following Tucker around. <laughs> A little bit more control. Now that would have absolutely elicited a mount before. And so if somebody was too late. But notice Tucker avoided him quite a bit and now he's not. They're about the same. About the same age. Tucker's how old now, Julie? He's two and a half. And the golden. Uh, she, how old are Goldens? Oh, I don't remember. She's Four and, and two. two. Yeah. But interesting, isn't that? He, he's so he was so obsessed with Tucker, but now that Tucker's trying to play with them, notice him just he's just walking away. Very interesting. Because this would not end if it were. Pardon me. There he goes. Uh, he was two here. She got him at a year. Yeah, he told them all. Hey, Tucker, you want water? Puppy with another puppy of unsupervised play? It's hard to say exactly what the cause is, but they did, he did a lot of mounting with that young dog. <laughs> okay, he gets off pretty fast. <laughs> so he he never played. So all that time he he never played. Um, he did he stopped mounting him, uh, but he never played. So what we had to do with him, obviously, is to, is if he was going to be with playgroups, if he didn't. Re we either had to put him with dogs that would tell him off, because then he would, with one one on one, he would respect the reprimand. But you could, he could never be in a pack of dogs. It was way too stimulating for him. So one on one, if the dog told him off, he would respect that. And then he, but he, he then he would just sort of hang with them. He would interact, but no, again, no playing. 
So here's a dog that people think, you know, you start off, and he took a puppy class too. He even took a puppy class. So you think they did everything right, but hey, living with a litter mate and that he was picked on basically, it was just that's all he learned. So it's hard to undo. It's diff very difficult to undo. So when they're, when they're on the trail walking, he gets very aroused when he sees other dogs. But she can't let him go because he's not going to greet. He's just going to mount. Question. Um, I was just thinking it'd be interesting to find out on his sibling that he was raised with what kind of social interaction he has with dogs, whether he does the same thing. He does, the, sa he does the, the same thing, but he does play. The sibling uh -huh. does play, yeah. from what I hear. And do you think that I, I have a friend who has a dog that is basically like that, and, but unfortunately it's a rescue, and she's been dealing with this problem for like four years, so we don't know what, you know, we can't figure out why, and, and I'm thinking, God, maybe this is, uh, you know, a reason. Because she's tried so many things, yeah. you know, and all the things will eat, you know, his lack of confidence and not, not uh -huh. you don't do this, corrections, and everything, nothing. It, yeah. it just doesn't. It, it, they're so conflicted with, 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 he's so conflicted with dogs, he doesn't obviously know what to do with them. He can hang with them fine. I mean, he, he, he's, I mean, he loves to go for hikes and walks with my dogs, uh, loves it, happy as can be. But when there's any kind of interaction, he just doesn't know how to do it right. Why would a dog always pick on the exact same breed? I mean, I have my, my lovely Border Collie mix. Uh, loves golden retrievers. I say it, they're the Cadillac of dog rides. They don't buck. They're, ja they're soft and, and plush. But, and I, I have him, whenever I see one, I call him to me. So he walks by me. But why would a dog always pick on the exact same breed? It depends on what their background is. Um, I, I've worked with many dogs who maybe a, a, one dog was attacked uh, by a golden retriever, German Shepherd, and to this day, he, that's the one breed that he will always go after. Nobody else, he's fine. So it could, it could just be a situation, it could be one experience. You know, one trial learner, they had one bad experience, and that's the dog. Or they don't, the body language, many times it's just the body language. I, I always think he wants to play with them. Uh, well, we, we, yeah, a lot of times people think the dog wants to play, but it's not. Yes? Yes, if, in the absence of uh, being able to use an air horn in that situation, I was trying to think of what you could use an alternative as an alternative because a lot of dogs are going to just freak at that air horn. I know. So could you have had a long line on the yellow lab and made sure you instantaneously gave the correction when he started to hump? I, I don't think that would be effective, you don't think be putting effective? a long line on him. Well, you saw when I, because he's, he's very respectful of me. I, you know, I, I sort of, if I give him the mother's look, he stops. Because I, I have set rules. I take care of them also. So mm -hmm. I set rules and boundaries. Don't mess. Mm -hmm. okay? You need to be under control. So he really knows what those rules are. And he re remembers. He's a smart dog. I really like him. But you see, if, if, my, if my physical correction is not going to work, a long line is not going to do it. Can you think of something else if the air horn is not going to work in the, in the... I would have to sit back and think about it a little bit. But, I, yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. And some a remote such, you know, I'd be worried about what w the reaction to the other dog. And I would not want to use anything stronger than that because I don't want that association. I want it to be an environmental correction, but not, not to that extreme where he's going to make that association. Because, you know, God forbid, if he... So they've tried, they tried that. He, he just jumps and leaps and catches the water. <laughs> now, is this like a, almost like an OCD behavior? I, I think it is, yeah. Does it respond to medication? I know there are OCD behaviors that respond. I suggested that. She uh -huh. didn't want to take that route because he's not with dogs that much. You know, I think if he, were, if he had to be in that environment, she would. But, you know, it's not worth it if she's happy just keeping him on lead and walking him and... And socializing him with, like, with my dogs, because he's fine. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Um, some other causes. Uh, uh, sometimes they say hypothyroidism. 
Oh, we, did we have another question? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have an eight and a half month old golden pup that walks around humping my other goldens. Doesn't mean from behind, means ahead or whatever. Is that just to play? He's not ready? It he could, is neutered? Could be. Uh, I, it, it's, it's, it's difficult to say. How do you figure out or correct? I'd redirect him to something else. I, just, yeah. I, would, I would see if you can get him to learn to play with you as much as possible. I, I did that with Star, too. I, I taught him to swim, and I taught... And I taught him to retrieve. So when he's around other dogs, that's what he does. So he's focused on something else other than the dogs. See, so he lives with these other ones, and it's in the evening when everybody's quieting down. Then he runs over and jumps on their head. Then he has to be quiet, too. If everybody else is calm, you're calm, too. You must follow in stride. So I would insist upon having him lie down at that point. If he can't, then you're, then you're tethered in it down. Good. One more. Is this on? I was just wondering if they tried, or if you guys tried a no reward marker with him repeatedly. If they did a, a no reward marker, like, and timing him out, like, over oh. and over and over. Didn't and that, no, no, that, as soon as you took him back out, like, if you, if you th notice when we took, took one to the dog out, as soon as they're back in there again. But time he, out, he, he, he just screams, uh -huh. he'll scream. And he carries on and on and on. And once he's finally quiet, as soon as you bring him back out, he's back to it again. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, sometimes if the dogs are on certain types of medication, like prednisone, it can induce some behavioral changes in dogs, sort of a sudden onset of mounting they have seen. And fearful dogs. They be can become bullies or the dogs that were bullied where possibly he was, take on that assertive behavior to ward off interactions. You know, who knows, he may be doing this, you know, thinking that all dogs just come up to you and mount. You know, again, we don't know. It's a difficult one to, <coughs> to, to um, understand. All right. Uh, might stop here to take a break. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's some things that I look for for good play to avoid aggression. Um, number one, all dogs, both dogs or all dogs, must be willing participants. Shouldn't have a dog in, in, in a group that's playing that doesn't want to be there, obviously. Uh, <clears throat> that is the key. There needs to be lots of give and take. So dogs need to be willing to switch positions versus I, oh, I'm always on top and don't put me on the bottom because I don't want to be there. Now it's different if the one dog likes to, I have male golden who loved to play on the bottom. You know, that was his choice and that's where he enjoyed. So he didn't need to switch. Okay, but if you have one dog that's not willing at all to switch, okay, again, that could lead into something. All dogs obviously must exhibit bite inhibition. Bleeding and play don't go together. I mean, accident, accidents, yes, accidental little nicks and bites, just like kids skinning their knees, it happens, but it shouldn't be there. Um, avoid allowing the dogs to become overly aroused. So that's where it's supervise, supervise, supervise. Stop it early and know when to let them work it out and when not to. You know, if you see a dog that has good social skills and he quickly tells the dog off or, um, and the other dog says sorry and then they go back to it again, that's fine. But if one dog is forced to continually to have to tell another dog out, that can escalate then into aggression. You know, it's, I don't want to have to keep telling you, and there's no reason to put the dog in the position. Because in, anywhere, if you think in the wild, they tell them once, it's over and done with. So if a dog is forced to continually have to confront a dog he doesn't want to be with, that's, uh, that's really unfair to that dog. Open mouth. 
good sign, really, really good sign. So you want a nice big open mouth. And even when we looked at Floyd, okay, his mouth was open. He was, he was, he was much, like, sort of like a happier look versus tight-lipped. Um, inhibited bites to the legs are fine or lower bodies as long as, again, they're inhibited bites. Uh, short mouthing to the necks. Okay, when we took a look at the puppies there, okay, with, with Bubba and the other one, that to me was a little bit too long. When I stuck my finger in with the puppies, it was hard. I didn't like how hard it was, so I will stop that. Batting, really nice. I teach my dogs, um, I put batting on cue, so what I, 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 I call it slap it, slap it. And so this way, if they're playing with another dog, I might say, slap it. And you get that little puppy bat. Um, so now, of course, I made that into a trick with, with Gwynny. I'm like, Gwynny, go, go slap Lance. And she goes over and goes, whack, on top of the head. <laughs> and he's there, because I've given him treats for it. <laughs> um, brief pounces. Okay. Again, fine. You pounce on each other. And even like up on top of the back, and I'll talk about that a little tomorrow the, with, with the fighting within the household. And pauses. They need to take pauses. They shouldn't just get themselves so worked up where they can't stop. Now, people ask when, uh, when I interrupt. And again, there's no uh, set rules for this, but this is just times when I w interrupt. If I see a dog that's showing signs of distress, He's yelping. I'm going to obviously protect that dog if <clears throat> any signs. Excessive mounting or other kinds of challenges, posturing, you know, lots of head over, leaning over, where it's going too far. They, you're not playing now. There's no need to be cocky about it. You know, you're not in a play mood, mood then. So recognize when the dog is in a play mood versus when he's in a challenging mood. Excessive vertical play that lasts for more than a few seconds, sort of that high up chest butting. Okay, if you allow that to keep happening, what happens is eventually they stay up longer, their forelegs start to get around, their mouth to mouth, and a fight develops. So if you start to see it go up, up, you know, a little bit sort of like a chest butt and then leap away is fine, but I don't like that up, up, it's hey, hey, hey. Um, excessive vocalization, okay. <laughs> when it goes on and on and on too much, again, can cause a dog to then react negatively. No interruptions or pauses. Again, I went over that. <laughs> I will interrupt. I will now give you a little time to relax. It doesn't mean that they need to have a time out, uh, out of sight, but it could just be a rest time. Settle yourself down. If you can't settle yourself down, then you're removed further away. <clears throat> uh, any kind of escalation of vocalization, um, like if, if you get any kind of growls, an escalation of the growl, again, always think about the pitch and the tone, whether it's going up or down, how long it is, how loud it is. Obviously, when a dog is avoiding the situation, he's sniffing the floor, you know, he's going up to the doorway, um, he's putting his head down, he's lying down, he's, he's, he's giving clear signals. And um, dogs are really good at giving clear signals to other dogs that they just don't want to interact anymore. I remember Pierre did that, when Pierre just sort of looked away and was looking up. It was beautiful, he was looking up at the owner. That is such a clear signal to a dog that I want to be bothered. I mean, it's a signal that we give to each other. If we do this when you're talking, I mean, it, that's so clear that I don't want to interact with you. So dogs get that as well. If I don't want to interact with my dogs and they're, they're, they're coming over, they're going, hey, is it time to go out yet? If I just do that, they just walk and they go away and they lie down. So it's a very clear signal. So if the dogs are giving that and he's not, then I, I'm going to stop it. I'm going to interrupt. When a dog is attempting, obviously, to diffuse the session, obviously competing over a resource. I'm going to interrupt that, get rid of whatever that resource is. Pinning and tandem sneezing. Tandem sneezing is a sign of affiliation or it, it's, it's a sign to diffuse the situation. Remember Pierre, when he was, when he was uh, with that puppy, he did a lot of... And then it stopped and then it was... 
So it's real fast sneezing. Okay? What he was doing there was he was attempting to, to, to diffuse the situation so he did not have to tell the puppy off. And he did that after he gave. I, what I liked about him was he gave so many signals to that puppy that he was done. But that puppy was saying, uh-uh, I'm not. Oh, well, I'm the big boy on the block, not you. Okay, so if you see a lot of that sort of tandem sneezing, that's a signal to you again to probably interrupt. All right, <clears throat> talk a little bit now about interspecific uh, play. Um, Rooney, Bradshaw, and Robinson in 2001 uh, <clears throat> did some studies uh, where humans can communicate a playful intent <clears throat> that can be called interspecific play signals. And it was interesting in this, um, in, in this particular study, uh, the signals that we think are going to elicit play to dogs typically don't, such as patting the floor and whispering. What they found was that if, it, if anything, it turned the dog off. And I tested that the other day with this little Belgian uh, shepherd that I'm working with who had mange at a very young age, and he's 15 weeks now and had, has had zero socialization. So you think a Belgian with no socialization with dogs or people at 15 weeks, and he's spooked. He is really spooked. So I have great concern for this dog. So what I did was, I, I thought, let me do it. And so I went, bup, 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 bup. and he backed up and he started growling at me. It was really, really interesting. So that's what people typically do. Okay? They, they will pat the floor. So what they found was, and even any kind of whispering, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? Okay, gave a very low play response in dogs. Um, <clears throat> running towards or away from the dog or tapping on the, the, the chest, uh, their, their chest uh, <clears throat> brought the play response up much higher. So anytime, and of course people don't typically do that, we do that as, as dog people. Because uh, how many of you don't mind if your dogs jump up on you? <laughs> yeah, most of us, most, most of us don't. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, but I like, and when I, when I come home, I greet, I always go hop up. It's just something I, I like to greet my dogs like that. Uh, <coughs> but rarely do people use this, and this is what really brings about playfulness in dogs. Uh, a play bow or a lunge, they were successful in eliciting play, especially when it was accompanied by some kind of play vocalization. Okay, so any kind of play bow getting down low. Now, I could, again, these are dogs who have some social skills. I can remember when I got Lance at four, he was basically, he was a stud dog, show dog, stud dog, that's what he did. And my husband got down on a low play bow, he ran away. <laughs> and he thought, oh God, what did we get here? And now he enjoys it. I mean, now he understands it, but he didn't understand that at all. Um, in 2002, Rooney and Bradshaw did a study, and dogs scored higher uh, in obedient attentiveness after a play session with people than before the play session. So in all of our classes, uh, we have been doing this for, for, gosh, for 15 years now, we teach people how to play with their dogs. Uh, so this way they are not using only food, Okay, they, and, they, and they use play a lot. So the nice part of it is, we'll say, we, let's say we're working on stay. Say, okay, do one more exercise. When you release the dog, run and go get your tug toy. Okay, so now there's interaction. So the reward now is also, you did a, a job well done, we get to play, but then their attentiveness is much greater. And I think that has also lowered our barking in our classes. The most playful dogs will exhibit significantly higher amounts of playful, at <coughs> atten playful attention-seeking behaviors, um, even if they were allowed to win at the game of tug. All right, so people say you always have to win. No, you don't. There's no win or lose. So, <coughs> so it doesn't mean that you have to win the game of tug. Because what Ashley loves it when, when uh, Ashley, Gwynnie loves it. If I'm tugging with her, I'm going, oh, 
you got it. She's like, yeah. And she brings it right back again. It gets her so excited. Like, yeah, let's do it again. Let's do it again. So to me, I think it's fair. Like, I can win sometimes when I say give, and that's my win. If I say give, that's my win. Okay? But you can have it back. But if I just let go, and, and then, then, then it's your win. So that, again, when you think about it, now the dog is saying, this is fun. You know, because now, it, now what, what happens is it's sort of the slots. It's randomly being reinforced also. Because sometimes you get it, sometimes I get it. It's like, no, it might be my turn. Okay, so <clears throat> real important. In 2003, um, and they did a study with, uh, with people, um, games with lots of physical contact may affect the attachment that you have with the dog. And they found a correlation between the games with lots of physical contact and low separation related behaviors, such as staying at the door when the owner's left or vocalizing um, in, in their absence. So it's really impossible to know whether these certain games influence our dogs, um, but it's definitely worth considering uh, it, it, with, with an increased physical contact, because it, it may impact somewhere down the road our relationship. So I thought that was, that was quite, quite interesting. So again, it's something that needs to be further studied. Um, Fagan in 1984, uh, in his study, uh, playful behavior that was tightly linked with good relationships, and especially true with parents. Parents that play with their children often have better relationships than parents that don't play with their children. So lots of studies have been done on that. So the parents who were most playful with their young tend to have the be better relationship with, with them. My parents were very playful. Uh, with us and and I think that allows us to be playful later on so it's when you think about playing with your dog when you're playing with your dog you both feel good I, I, I mean don't you don't you love to play I don't, I don't know anything better I can put a smile on your face whatever it is you know throwing a frisbee just interacting you know seeing your dog's tail wag when you're interacting and I think it just lowers our blood pressure because we're, we're both having fun. <clears throat> now, <laughs> object pet play can be done solo, or it can be done with another individual, whether that be a dog or a person. But if you're going to do it with a person, and I even think with dogs, but if you're going to do it with a person, you need to establish rules. And <laughs> we, teach, we teach Tug week one of puppy class. So the very first week when they come in. Um, the longer the toy, the better. And obviously, you, the rules are, do not grab the object until I say, take it. You must relinquish it when I say, give. And I have two release words for my dogs. Give means put it in my hand. Release means, or I actually call it spit. <laughs> spit means drop it on the ground. You know when the balls get really disgusting? I don't want it in my hand. You know, so this could be like just a kickball game. So, and no accidental misses. Don't get so overly aroused that you, like now body parts are part of the tug game. And avoid objects in play. <clears throat> uh, I, I sometimes will avoid objects in play if you have resource guarders. Who controls the object? So this next video that you're gonna see, it's, it's really interesting. Um, there's tremendous amount of vocalization. And it's high, it's raspy, um, it's loud. The play almost seems out of control. They kind of get into like this, sort of these little kind of scraps, and nothing ever happens. So it's, it, it's, it's, it's fascinating to watch. Um, and I can't say, I'm not sure that I would have let it go, but it just seemed to work out. And I, I, again, this video was sent to me um, for observation. You probably need this a little bit louder, Alta. very 
close. I mean, look how close their mouths are together. And there's the, the, the you see here the the, the the one sneeze. And they didn't stay high up long, but there was a chest butt and they came off of it. They, they switch. You notice that they kind of stayed light on their feet there, and they've been doing lots of different things from chasing, they move to the object, to physical contact. You take a look at this too and you think to yourself when people say, why are you giving my dog a break? Look at the, look at the amount of energy these dogs are expending just in a short, brief period of time. Think about the muscles they're using, their stomach muscles, they're all parts of their body really. <coughs> And then back to play. Drinking together now. It could the Aridel could have went over to the water bowl maybe to diffuse the situation. But let's take a look at the Aridel. The Aridel looks like he's getting a little tired, isn't he? Again, going to the perimeters of the room. Going back, see, so looks like he's starting, starting to look, give little signals to diffuse it here. But a little bit different than the other video that we saw. Okay, he's allowing it. Okay, I'll take a break here too. And this is where we have to think when these dogs go to go to daycare. Um, again, we don't know if the Airedale, this is the only exercise that he gets, and we don't know that the other, I don't know if it's probably a doodle of some sort. Maybe he goes jogging five miles a day. He's just in better shape. But at this point, if I were observing this, I'd probably myself, I would probably stop it because I'm just seeing the Airedale tiring out a bit. And that's where it can flip from play to aggression.
<laughs> Gosh, I, I guess I'm a little too big. <laughs> Notice the walk, the gait is very different. Okay, so, so you can kind of see, did you sort of hit a point you knew exactly where you may have interrupted? Question over here. Um, I guess it's kind of an, observ an observation as well as a question. Okay. The first time the Airedale went to the water bowl, that's probably where I would have stopped it. Okay. Um, only because t I didn't see him get water. I saw him go over there and like sniff at the water bowl, and to me that was saying he kind of wanted a break. But I, I don't, don't know, know if that water bowl was empty or not because oh. he didn't drink. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I mean, that, I, but but. It, it, it could be. I, I think the water bowl was empty because oh. they never went back to it again. Oh, that's true. Okay. Yeah. But, but, you, but it's not to say that you're not right. Everybody, you have to go with your own comfort level. You know, who's to say that I'm right, you're wrong, you're right, I'm wrong? It, it's your own comfort level. And we all, we all have different comfort levels. You know, some of us push a little more. Some of us are a little bit more cautious. Again, you know, as long as everyone's having a good time, no one gets hurt, Yep, if that's your comfort level, go with it. Yeah, can you also wait and see what the, if the other dog kind of respects the fact that that dog's done playing, that's yeah. kind of good for them to learn also, right? I, I definitely think so. I think they worked it out fine. You know, it, it did times where I thought, ooh, here it comes, and it never came. Yeah. You know, so they were working it out quite nicely. Um, I, the only reason why I would stop it is because I thought the Airedale was, was obviously yeah, getting okay. tired. Yeah. You know, and, I, and who knows how sore he was getting too. In the back. Is there a point where allowing a dog, maybe a rougher playing dog, that maybe that might be normal for them, but could that, if you let it go on too long, could that be teaching them that it's okay to play that rough with everybody? I mean, where do you kind of draw the line between intervening and let them figure it out? Yeah, yeah, oh, that, that, that's a great point. Yeah, I think if that, if that were... If, if they were always playing like that, at that high level of arousal, yes, that's going to probably carry over to, to other dogs as well. Um, most of the time it does. Uh, unless you get a really good social dog that, that can adjust himself. Like remember um, the American, sta uh, the American um, Bulldog. I mean, that's a dog that plays really, really rough, but look how he was with the puppy. So again, there's no black or white. Can it occur? Yes, but not always. Good. So, and, we, and again, we don't know. <laughs> Anything else? I'm confused of when to allow the growling still and do you ever take the breed of the dog into consideration when yeah. how much growling to allow yeah i mean sir, there are certain breeds like pugs when when pugs play they they tend to be more vocal what about pit bulls <laughs> no i don't want to ground with pit bulls okay. i don't because they can escalate really fast um it, it just it shouldn't be there and they typically don't they're not vocal um it, it, you, do you find that true trish oh, yeah. yeah they're quiet Yeah, that's what I've seen too. They are quiet players. Um, Shelties might be more vocal. Yeah, yeah. German shepherds can be. Yeah, they can be very vocal. But their pitch is ho higher. I find that their pitch sometimes can be much higher too. Um, or it's a deep, deep, deep bark, and it means nothing. It means nothing. So it's, you've got to read. I, I like that, uh, that you're, you're confused because there is no, well, I don't like that you're confused. <laughs> but, but you're confused for a good reason because there is no black or white. You know, it's the whole body of the dog and it's the, it's the partner of the dog. Um, you know, like in this situation, they did work it out fine. So, and that could be how they play. So it is, always think to yourself if, if, you're, if, if you had your eyes closed and you think, I'm not liking what I'm hearing, then interrupt. Maybe that's, maybe that's a, 
a good way of saying it. Like it's, it's getting a little edgy. Then I would interrupt. Mm -hmm. But you see, it, even though this was raspy, it was deep, it was short. <laughs> it was gone. And then it was quiet for a while. Good. Yes. Is there ever any downside to being a little bit strict or too strict? If you're not sure, just stop it. Lower the arousal level. No, I'd, I would rather have you stop it, rather be safe than sorry. Okay. Yeah, I don't think there's a downside at all to it. If one dog is giving these cutoff signals that, you know, the water bowl and the behind the chair, and you don't stop that, I mean, these two did work it out, but aren't you running the risk of... Um, teaching the dog that his cutoff signals aren't being heard. You bet. And the other dog ignoring the cutoff signals. I mean, sh should you be helping that? If you see one dog giving cutoff signals, maybe you should. And it's not working, I'm going to support the dog that is trying to diffuse the situation at that point, yes. So, so this way, now will it teach the other dog anything? I don't know, probably not. <laughs> but who cares? But I am going to support that dog. That is a time because he's, what he's going to learn is that these signals don't work. So I've got to do something else. And what do you think something else might be? Escalation, yeah, which I, you don't want. And they're very clear signals. To me, these are very, very clear signals. And it's sort of like saying, I don't care that you don't want to play anymore. You're still going to play with me, whether you like it or not. And that's sort of what it is. No, but too bad. Yes. Do we have one more? Hang on. Do you think there's a, any magic number of how many humans should be involved per dog? Because like, there's so many daycares out there. And I often wonder, you know, for the greed of money, are people having too many dogs and not enough people to monitor appropriate play? I like two to ten. I find two to ten is a, is a decent number. And I guess it depends on also, you know, size and temperament. You know, a lot of times with the small dogs, if you've got a group of small dogs, um, it, it depends. But I, I, I say two to ten. I, again, no, that's just my comfort level. Good. What do you have, Trish? Oh, about that. About that. And depending on how, how experienced the... Yes, yeah, it, it, that's, that's a good, good point. They, you, need, you need that experience. If they're inexperienced, then you want more, obviously. Good. All right. Play and dominance. In 2003, Rooney and Bradshaw did a study. He wanted to know if there are links between play, between dog-human relationships when, when, when they play. And in this particular study, they defined dominance as a tendency of the dog to assert priority of access to a resource. Right, so that's how they defined it for the study. And they defined attachment as the tendency of the dog to seek and maintain contact with the owner. All right, so again, for purposes of the study, that was their definition. And the big question is, is playing tug of war enhance dominance? You've probably heard that a gazillion times. The result of the study did not support it. And there were previous studies done as well that concluded that tug of war or tugging does not substantially alter do the dominance dimension between dogs and humans. So if the question comes up, you can say that it has been studied and there's, there, it does not. Now there's a popular, is it a popular theory or is it a common myth? Um, they've also found no difference in the dominance dimensions of dogs that retained the toys at the end of the game and those um, where the owners retained it. Again, so there is no difference there whatsoever. So we, let's just forget about the sort of win-lose. Now it's different, I think, if the dog that like, takes it and guards it that's a different story, where he takes it underneath a table and then decides he's going to guard it. But it's just, you know, you're, you're done with the game and you, you, you drop the object and then you walk away. If you look at most dogs, what they do is they walk away with you. The, the object is dead. All right, so the fun of it is playing with this toy, getting it alive, making it become alive. So... <clears throat> Uh, most dogs will just let it, let it be. Um, now, does the interaction initiation affect dominance? 
Dogs who are frequently allowed to initiate social interactions, okay, whether that be petting or play is included, what they found was in two studies that there was an increase in dominance over the owners because they were basically reinforcing their pushy, bossy behaviors. And the dog scored low in amenability and more likely to exhibit aggression towards the owners. So we have to take that into, in, in, into mind as well. If you've got this dog who's demanding all the time and play with me now, pet me now, do this for me now, let me out now, feed me now, yeah, that's be, all being reinforced. <clears throat> so other findings in the study. Um, dogs that were long players, that liked to play with their humans for long periods of time, had preference over their owners as compared to other dogs. So the longer that you play with your dogs, their preference is going to be you over the other dog. And that could be the household dogs. Uh, my two dogs have never played together. Never interacted. They get along beautifully. They are very, very close. I mean, they'll lay, they'll lay side by side, head on each other, and they'll snuggle up together. They have never played together. They play with us. They love to play with us, and their, their favorite time is when all four of us are, are together and we're playing. Okay, so, again, they've never played. Um, involvement or contact during play was high, highly correlated with a confident interactivity between dog and human. And the features of the relationship were determined, determined the way they play. And the relationships are controlled by the same overriding traits. So, <clears throat> good question? Um, I have, to, I have to remember how it was defined in there. Um, confident interactivity, if I recall what their definition of this was, and I forgot to put it in here, um, was that um, when, they, when human and dog interacted, okay, that it was stable. It was understood. So the dog kind of trusted Yes, them. yes. Okay. Thank you for reminding me. I have to put that in there. All right, rules of play for dogs with people. Obviously, no mouth. And wh what we're going to do is I'm going to finish up with this, and then Trish and I are going to um, do, do some greetings here with, 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 adult, with adult, adult dogs to see if we can match up play styles. Um, no mouth on humans during play. Relinquish objects when asked, obviously. No accidental grabs to clothes or body parts. Humans and play, not dogs. And I think that's the important key factor. So many people say their dogs don't play with them. And I say, well, what do you mean? Well, he'll retrieve once or twice and then he stops. And he's just, I say, well, what do you do? Well, nothing. <laughs> well, if my dog stops after two, you know where he's going? Inside or in his crate. He's not going to be allowed to now wander around and decide, oh, playtime's over. So if you really want to get sustained play, the best thing that you can do is, if the dog decides it's over with, put the dog away in a crate and play with another dog. Now that dog is going to want to get out there and interact. So you can get longer play periods if you do that. But that's why dogs, again, the dog is making the rules. I'm done. I don't want to play. Um, I think dogs are, should be allowed to ask to play as long as they ask politely and they have to take no for an answer. So if you say to yourself, maybe you're working on the computer and your dog drops a ball in your lap and you think, no, you were just out an hour ago. There's no reason for it now. You should be able to put the ball away without the dog bugging you. But if you've been sitting at the computer maybe for three hours and you think, it's time. You know, it, it, it's, it's probably time. I might get up then and play with the dog. But they got to learn to take no for an answer. Owners should not be used as boxing bags, obviously. And, and the dog should obey all commands. And if he's, if he's told to stop, he should stop. So rules of play for, for people with dogs. And these are the rules that we give our students. Play every day. Every single day, get out. 
Um, I pl play with my dogs four times a day. They get four play sessions a day. So they look forward to that. Now, if, if it's a rainy day, they take no for an answer. It's, we're, not, we're not playing today. We're just going to hang out. Okay? But most of the times, I have to say, we, we do about four play sessions a day. Um, really tell people not to chase the dog. It's just such a bad, bad game, chasing down dogs. Um, once they realize how much fun that is, you... Oh. So, if anything, get the dogs chasing you. Dogs love to chase, but don't chase them. Um, not, do, not, do not tolerate any rough play. Use it as a reinforcement. And I, I find that dogs do so much better. Play is so much more reinforcing than food. It's so much more reinforcing. Even dogs that people say, well, he doesn't really like to play. Well, he hasn't learned to play. I think the average person many times thinks that the dog was born knowing how to play with humans. They're not. When you think about it, think about how they play with their own species. And we play very different. Our rules are very different. So we have to educate people and teach them, you need to teach your dog how to play with you. He's not going to naturally know. Penalty breaks if, if they break the rule. Okay, time out. You break the rule, time out. And obviously all family members must follow the rules. However, dogs are pretty smart. They know what they can get away with with one and not the other. So I'm not real tough on this. Okay, um, you know, my husband likes to do like the hand teasing game with Gwynny. And you know, it's, so fine, do it. And when, when, she, when she bites you and you bleed, that's your problem. <laughs> it's not my problem, I don't hand tease. So, and actually what I did was, I, and it's so good when you've got dogs, who like I put it on cue, so when he hand teases, I go, bite, bite. You know, and, and, and now I'm like, oh, go, go bite your father. And she jumps up and she bites him in the nose now. <laughs> Bite your father, bite your father. Good girl, yes, ah, good girl. <laughs> I have a, a little bit of sick sense of humor. <laughs> oh. The dog must respect human space. Okay. Again, know where my space is. Um, Stars was terrible at this, absolutely terrible. He had no concept of, and he's, you can see he's like a bull in a china shop. That's a big dog. So lots of body blocks. I use my body quite a bit. And incorporate training into play. Again, don't tolerate mouth. And don't give it away for free. How many people go out there and they just throw the ball for the dog? It's like, oh, gosh, do something with the dog. Use some impulse control. Absolutely, don't give it away for free. Sometimes give it away for free. I might go, freebie, you know, it's, so you don't have to do anything. But that, that's when I practice. And then rules for husbands. My husband thinks this is totally appropriate. And it was fine with our Goldens. It was not fine with Lance. Because Lance got overly aroused by this, and he dropped the toy and bit him right in the nose. <laughs> and I thought, I said, oh, Marty, you're bleeding. Isn't that a shame? <laughs> so he no longer does the mouth tug with the Belgians. <laughs> that didn't work out so well. All right, playing with multiple dogs. Um, Teach impulse control exercises for each dog. Really important. So if you're working with, um, we have uh, my assistant director, he's got a shepherd and an, and an Aussie, and then I've got my two Belgians. We will have four balls and four dogs, and they all go after their own ball, and they all bring them back. Okay, so you're teaching impulse control to each of them, okay, and no, no outfielders. Use separate release words also when you have multiple dogs. So if I throw the ball, I might say Gwyn Gwyn. That means Gwynny gets it. And Bud Bud, that means that Lance gets it. So you're controlling the game. <clears throat> Teach different, again, words for relinquishment also. So you know, they know what to do with it. Um, stop play when the dogs find each other more interesting. 
So if all of a sudden they go, eh, we had enough of you, we're going to go off and play on our own. Too bad. Okay, time's up. We're playing together here. No outfielders. Okay, so you're throwing the ball with the multiple dogs and one dog selects it. Okay, I'm just going to be out here and catch all the balls. <laughs> Sorry, you're out, you're out of the game. Uh, no grabbing toys from other dogs' mouths. Okay, I'm a big believer and that's a good way how to start a dog fight. So early on, I teach my dogs very early on to avoid. So what I did with Gwynnie was, if one toy was thrown, you don't get it. Lance always gets it. So I didn't want her to think that, you know, let's charge for the Frisbee to see who can get it first. So she's learned now, uh, if, a, if there's an object or a toy near another dog, she won't go near it. She won't go near it. Now that could be a problem in the obedience ring though. When I throw the dumbbell, if there's a dog standing on the other side of, of the, the gate, she might not pick it up. But I'm not reverting to the ear pinch. <laughs> um, scent discrimination games again, fun. All right, um, I, here's where I shot this video as soon as I shouted. Uh, <clears throat> this is in the backyard. And again, three is not a good number right here. Because as you can see, Stars decides he was going to mount, but that's their other dog, Maisie, and she's a big controller. A huge controller. This is an accident waiting to happen. Accident waiting to happen. Um, so, with dog parks, can owners discriminate from social hierarchies and play interactions and aggressive behaviors? Um, no, they, 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 they really can't because they're not educated in that. Um, they're not looking for facial features in the dogs. Um, they don't know nothing about vocalization. Oh, the dog barks at home all the time too. Okay. So again, that's one of the problems with dog parks. And how do owners know when the interactions um, are more intense and invasive also? Again, they're not educated by that. Sh show you a quick video here. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Okay. And so last week. So I can clean up the tape. Here you go. So here's where I was talking about earlier, about you see how we kind of put hold the dog into a down. This dog was always going up over the top, okay, and the owner didn't interrupt at all. So you see how we just gently hold down so the dog is down and it allows the other dog to come in. And people do ask, does it, does it bring about some frustration in the dog? Initially, yes, it does, but you know what? There is frustration in life. You need to learn to deal with it. Okay, so you don't want to do it, obviously, if the, dog's <clears throat> if the dog is now being pounced on. That's different. But if the other dog comes in and finally is like, hey, hey, you're down there nice and low, the dog says, well, oh, okay, well, this is not bad. Keep myself low. Um, there are risks and benefits, obviously, to dog parks. Uh, some risks, spread of disease, if people don't clean up and dispose of the waste. Uh, is there water? Is there shade? It's amazing to me how many people go out with their dogs and they don't bring any water on a really, really hot day with them. Oh no, we forgot water. Okay. Um, is there enough space to avoid crowding? And they're packed in to these tight little close quarters. They need space to run. Uh, bully behaviors, again, <clears throat> We have to be careful about that. The owners might not recognize it. And again, they're not going to know when they need to work it out and when not to. And is the dog targeting a weaker, less confident member that won't stand up for himself? It's not a dog that belongs in a dog park, especially with that particular dog. So you can see very, very, there's plenty of room, but part of the problem here is, look at all the owners, they're standing in one area. 
And this is this is a huge fenced in area. Now this is the, that little Brittany's that's a newcomer into this crowd here. Look how anxious this dog is. And they're not being inappropriate, but it's very it's 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 very close and crowded. Okay, so if, if you can, what we do with, with, with our Romp and Rover is we get people to spread out. Okay, don't, just don't cluster into this tiny little area. Because uh, that's where the dogs are going to be, too. They're going to be there. So spread yourselves out or walk. We do a lot of walking back and forth. So we're always moving around, not just standing still. Some people, it's, they, you know, they, they bring... Uh, uh, chairs with them and they sit down dangerous dangerous even in a daycare situation I always say if, you, if you're going to have chairs for your staff elevate the chair okay because there could be dogs that all of a sudden decide to take you on as theirs as well and then everybody gets crowded everybody wants the attention of the person sitting in the chair and that can end up being a, a dog fight Object garters, I talked about that. No puppies under five months, just a bad idea. And injuries. Um, if the dog is out of shape, he can get an injury. Small dogs mixed in with big dogs and fights. Obviously, if a female's in estrus, when we're bringing the dog there, because um, the dogs could end up swarming her, even if it's a female, and he, regardless of whether they're intact or not. Dogs also can form loose packs. And I've seen dogs who've just gotten together, they've been playing for a long time, they, they can start to haze dogs. Health issues, are you, again, people might not even be aware their dog might have mange, for example, and not even know it. Um, or exceptional number of intact males. But there are benefits. Dog-dog um, socialization, if you've got a nice group of dogs, uh, who play well together can be nice, so they're continuing their socialization. Um, dog people socialization. We have found too, a lot of times dogs are a little bit fearful of people, and they're, when they're having a good time playing, they might go up to people, and we don't recommend in our Rop and Rovers, there's no food allowed. They're not allowed to bring their treat pouches in there, so there's nothing to guard. But they tend to go up to people more often, and usually they're doggy people. Um, physical and mental stimulation, it, there's educational advantages. Uh, we, in our Romp and Rovers, we, what we do is we describe every interaction that's going on to help them learn about what the play interaction is about, what's acceptable, what's not acceptable, and why. Um, and there are community advantages. Uh, a lot of people exchange phone numbers. So they can go hiking with each other, and people have made friends, because they, they are dog people. Two-gate system, um, again, the more entrances and exits that you have, the better. And they should be spread out. Okay. Knowledgeable human supervision. That's really, really important. Natural barriers, you can put agility equipment up, and maybe have a special training area as well. Um, there are a lot of privately, do you have privately owned dog parks in California too? A few? Okay, yeah, we, they just started some in New Jersey. And, and I have to say, some of them are, are quite good. Um, they, they, do, they do testing of the dogs and they've got like swimming areas and they've got people um, working there. So some of them are good, the privately owns. And they're, they, again, well maintained. Um, so, in summary, before we, we, we get some dogs out, um, we really need new research, and it is starting, which is really, really exciting. And I think it will move forward, because so many people are interested in this now. And you think, years ago, you know, we didn't have all these daycares for dogs. We didn't have dog parks for dogs. And it was very different. Um, they didn't take their dogs to training. They weren't out so much. So there's been a huge influx on, it's, it's almost, almost too much, I think, of dogs interacting. 
Uh, so I think that that's the important part. Puppy classes have been around for a long time, but again, I see uh, we see a big difference in the puppies that are coming in. Are you seeing that out here in California as well? Change in puppies? Yeah, compared to 10, 15 years ago? Very different. Yeah. Not, uh, they're, a, they're, they're not puppies anymore. They're, they're older than they used to be. But lots of sort of devil feisty puppies. Yeah. You're seeing that too? Yeah. So um, we need some answers. Um, how many play buddies do dogs really need to develop properly? You know, is there, is there that magic number? I don't, I don't think so. I think that we really tend to overdo it too much. What context for play best promotes the healthy development of social skills? That's something else that's a big question mark. Um, how do overwhelming experiences affect dogs and their future behavior? Again, that, that's a big question because that really just depends on the particular dog, but there have been no studies done on that. How much time do dogs need to play? Okay, we don't have the answer for that one. And what situations allow dogs <clears throat> the play experience they really need to lower the risk of damage? And these are things that we, we really don't know about. Uh, so, Um, do we have two? Well, we have Strider. Oh, okay. Who is the ultimate greeter. Okay. And then, and then we have this little jerk. No. <laughs> so which one do you want to hold? I don't, I, I, that's fine. <laughs> I'll, I'll hold the jerk. <laughs> now his name is Benny. Benny? Yeah. So Benny. what we'll do here, everybody, and, and again, this is sort of like you say you're looking for good play partners, okay, how to do it. Um, experience is, is important, okay, because you don't want to be hanging the dog, tight leading the dog, but you also have to, you have to trust your partner as well. That, that's really important because if something happens, you sort of almost, it's like a dance. I know when I work with, whee! And when I, when I work with my assistant director and, and, and another one of my trainers, I mean, we just know every movement we're going to make okay, real fast. So we're almost thinking on the same plane. Okay. Which, since you're in New Jersey and I'm here, that doesn't dig the we <laughs> yes. the Oh, I'm sure we will. Notice how we move with the, do with the dog, keeping it loose. So we've got greeting here. You don't have to stick your nose all the way up there. <laughs> yes, he does. He's a little big man. See, we know. <laughs> Come back up here. <laughs> no, you can't have me. He's a, he nips at people a lot. He nips at people? Mm -hmm. <laughs> she, now she tells me. <laughs> oh, by he the way. Hard and draws blood every yes. time. <laughs> Come back here. It's like a wild looking thing. <laughs> Strider can't figure out what's going on. Well, you know, I was gonna say, I was always saying that too. You can see Strider's a little confused by it. Oh, Trisha, you're here. Uh, what about one of the uh, um, the ones that we looked at with a the, the like the one in the corner? The one the, uh oh. <laughs> the one in the corner? Would that one be good? Yeah, the one, the one in 30, all the way at the end of the 30s. Yeah. Really? 
So you can see, I mean, he's got some interest in dogs, but not entirely. Like, I think he's, he, he keeps coming to the people, and he's, he wants to wander off. He doesn't have a really long attention span. <laughs> He's not very interested in playing. How old is he? Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know very much about him other than the fact that he nips when he's... He's about a year and a half. Yeah. <laughs> it's Benny and Bobby? Yeah. And Bart. Benny, Bobby, and Bart. It's like the mohawk. He's got like this mohawk look. So Strider actually could just kind of wants to hump him. Yeah, you can see it. Y'all can see that Strider wants to hump him? He's, he's probably going, I don't know what to do with him, so I guess I'll just do that. So you can see the conflict there. You see he's, he's very he's conflicted. He's not really sure. He's not giving real clear signals. Okay. He's greeting. He's doing some greeting, but it's, it's fast and it's... it's well, it isn't civilized. That's right. No, it's not. All right, no, no, no. Oops, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm you so break it sorry. at yours. <laughs> I'm sorry there, bud. Oh, silly. He's going to New Jersey. <laughs> no wonder he nips at people. <laughs> Erase that from the video. <laughs> Pia flips dogs. <laughs> okay, here comes. So there's going to be another dog coming who's, who's yeah, probably you, will meet a very different way. You could see he's like, perplexed. <laughs> what is it? Well, this dog would be a, a, kind of a, a strange player anyway because he doesn't have any attention span. Strider's conflicting behavior is. Uh, well, after neutering, Strider got a little gay. So. <laughs> uh, he does. All right. That's all right. Lance is intact and he's gay. <laughs> oh, he's all right. <laughs> But with Strider, it's a little interesting, too. It's sort of like, again, you see, remember we were talking about this shepherd wanting to control? And this is sort of like, you are so out of control. I need to, I need to control you. All right, so this is very different. <laughs> All right, there, there's, you see the up in the chest budding right there I was just talking about? No, no, no. Oh, hang on, you're all tangled there. Good boy. So intimidated, right? Actually hid behind me. You're not coming on with me. <laughs> Lots of avoidance. No. That's actually really interesting. He, he changed his tune. Yeah. But that right, I'll save you, honey. Fast. You make a good agility dog. Actually, it might be interesting to get Strider down here and, and see what he does with this one. Yeah. You want somebody? Where did Strider just go back? Huh. <laughs> so the question would be are they, is this one playing? Right? Hmm.
This, the little one doesn't think so. Oh, of course you would. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> My concern with this is that with the way this one would run, I think this one would just, oh, just chase him like Just crazy. chase him right down. Okay, just, just let Strider go. Oh, look, the little one got brave now. Ha, oh, big buddy's with me. Try to wait. Why don't we just do the uh, the little ridge back for them? Okay. Strider, come here. Strider. All right. Whoa. Strider, I know you love that one, but oh look. Thank you. Very different. So you see the difference in in the two right now. It's it's. it's Adult dog, little, little, scampering little dog, turn this dog on, okay, a lot. So that might not be good, a good play mate. Look at the difference in the behavior of him now. Staying low, look how low he is now, coming in low. <laughs> okay, lots of muzzle licking. Night, look at the, okay, keeping his body low, almost rolling over there. God, I'd love to play with you. Very soft yes, and wiggly. Yeah. <laughs> Starting now. No. <laughs> so they were both turned on by the little scampering little thing. You know? That was that was more interesting to them. <clears throat> That's fascinating. Yeah. No strider. Now, how many of you would feel comfortable putting these two together? So we've got fifty-fifty again. Did you? Did we? Um, you would put. How many? Together. How many say yes? Let's see your hand. All right. So majority say yes. No. And for, for, for those that are not comfortable putting them together, again, there's, again, there's no right or wrong answer. Just tell, tell me why. What, what makes you uncomfortable? I just don't feel like they really play together. So you don't, you don't think that they will play to, together? Okay. Friday. looking away, he's avoiding, he's, he's not returning, and when he does return action, he's mounted. He's, he's, he's going straight for the mountain. So there probably won't be a play interaction here. Pardon? Yeah, so um, what a member of the audience said that it's not equal, Strider sort of avoiding here. Um, he, he would like to mount him, but the play behavior is not the same. He's getting a little more loose here. Well, what looks to me like is this dog is going to do exactly the same thing he does with the little dog. Yes. With the big dog, once yes. he figures out, he can do it. Yep. And then he's obviously just done it. See. 
you notice right 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 you see right there now he's getting over the top just like he did with the little one he was very respectful initially because of size want me to hold it want me to come here bud okay yeah. he, he was very respectful <laughs> Do you want another one? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what would be good? You want the lap garter? Let's do the lap garter, yeah. Oh. Okay, I would exhaust that underdog Those, first. Yes. And then let him play. Yes. Really tired. Yes. Before he could play. Yeah, without, without a doubt. Once he was tired and he wasn't scampering around so frantically, maybe they could play. Yeah. You know, there might be some play involved there. But, um, but again, you know, the, 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 I, I would totally agree with you. I would, have to, I would probably tire them both out. The little one I'm really Yes. The little ridge mix. Um, can you think of a breed just off hand that would be appropriate for that kind of energy? Jack Given Russell? <laughs> <laughs> Irish Terrier? Yeah. Okay. Um, plot Hound? P plot Hound? I know, I don't know enough about plot hounds. He could. I'd be afraid a boxer might hurt him. If he could catch I, I him. Don't know. I don't know whether he played like a boxer. He certainly wanted to get up on top like a boxer did, but he didn't really kind of... He wasn't boxing. Boxing. Yeah. He, he was sort of just up. Remember the white puppy that we saw earlier? A little bit up like that in the air. You know, but it wasn't so much boxing, but it was up. It was elevated. A, a little bit. But he even did that when it was, the leash was loose. Would he be good? Would he benefit from playing with a dog that would kind of give him some boundaries? Hmm. Probably. Um, I think he would. Probably. Um, I don't know if he would even yeah. accept the boundaries, though. Yeah, that's what I was kind of wondering. With the little one. Okay, that it's hard to say. He, I think he would go off and do something else. <laughs> you know, when Are you talking would, about the Ridgeback or the little thing? The little one. The, the brown dog that was just here. That's oh, the, I'm that's sorry. The yeah, I'm sorry. Would I he have done better one. with a dog that maybe corrected him and maybe he'd be able to... Yes. Yeah. Yes. I think he meant the little one. I think the little one would go off and just do something else. Yeah. And this is one that doesn't like... She, she, she's a lap garter. A lap garter? Yeah, she's a lap garter. Isn't she adorable? She's, she's a Basenji mix. Are you the one that bit Strider? I can't remember. A lot of fear. Okay, lots a lot of fear. fear. You see the low back kind of tucking, tucking down. No. No. <laughs> and if you notice what I'm doing, everyone, I, where am I? Where, where, what, where is my? Where are my arms? And what's my body doing? It's staying near her neck. If I'm going to greet like, up here and I need to pull her away, you want to fling the dog through the air. Obviously, but if I'm down, if I stay down low, I can quickly pull her away, but keep her on the ground. So you sort of have to know where, where to go when you're when you're working with dogs too to be quick about it. Okay. So she doesn't like dogs. No, you could to see, totally see this. This is what we do a lot. Um, we'll take a, if, if, if for, for dog-dog introductions, it, with, with owners, we'll take a dog that is stable mm -hmm. and do that. Yes. And let the other dog have at the butt. Yeah, well, we, we will as well. So, but again, that takes, it takes a really confident, stable dog. Or a lot of really good treats. Yes. <laughs> and, and I've even gotten to the point where I've done this. Yeah. <laughs> Smell it. I don't Ew. like it. Ew! 
I can't go there. Disgusting. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> you want to uh, take a chair over and sit with her and yeah. So, so that do, I don't know if you want to do that. <laughs> you don't jump up. Oh, come, come on, little honey. Oh. Okay. Good girl. Oh, look at that girl. There's the look. And, and there's a growl. Can you all hear that? Can you hear the growl? I'm not going to come here. Come here, Good. Very good. good sweetie. Mm -hmm. Proximity to Pia. Yeah. Pia's the powerful one in the whole room, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, knows, she knows where the power is. Strider is now done. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> he, he's finished. I wonder if she'll start growling. <laughs> oh, we've had that before. Okay. Anyway, she's kind of an interesting dog. It, it, <laughs> she's up for adoption. <laughs> Today we give you a special on her. Is she actually people social? Pardon? Oh, she's people social, yeah. But I mean, she's not connected really connected. No, I think she's kind of I think she's kind of nervous right now, but she does connect with people. Cool. But she's a Basenji mix. You know how they connect with people. It's kind of a cat-like way. Yeah. And so that, you know, that, that would be And she's giving off little growls right now. She's got the mama stare down, doesn't she? I mean, they're, they're low little growls. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Good girl. Good girl. Mm. Thank you, sweetie. Oh, this wasn't the one that meant people. Why I come out here, I have no <laughs> the, the other one, the little black one, just to, to, to be clear about that, the little black one bites in play. And so we're working on the biting in play. But it's nipping. I mean, it really isn't. It, yeah. isn't, it isn't stuff for little kids or anything. But he doesn't Good. mean it in a... He's not trying to, to, yeah. to bite, to hurt. Good. Very Good. Very good, good. That's good girl. Yeah. Is a good girl? Yes. Oh, very nice. So, Pia, do you think you're, the fact that you're on yeah. the floor with High five. Her High five. Has helped a lot with this? Yes. Yeah, I, I definitely think, you know, getting close, she's with me. He's calm. Uh, we're, I'm on the floor. Oh, that's not quite nice. What you good. Do? And she's laying down to give a little sniff closer to him. Very good girl. How nice, see? Uh -huh. 
<laughs> I'm not sure I like them. <laughs> See, he's a very handsome boy. He's a very handsome boy. Right? Yeah, good. I like that she's, at least she's, she's gone down a couple of times, so. No, oh, yes. Oh. Pia? <laughs> Pia? Yes. With um, you being the center of her world right now, if you were to reach over and interact with Strider, pet him and stuff, do you think that she has any, yeah. makes any difference to her in terms of, <laughs> not negatively. There's your answer. <laughs> you belong to me. <laughs> no, you're not coming home with me. Sorry. <laughs> you are very cute. You are very cute. Good, good. Good boy. <laughs> good, good girl. Um. This would be nice for Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very kidding. good Grandma. Only kidding. <laughs> and as long as Grandpa doesn't live there too. <laughs> I don't. I mean, I don't. I don't know that she's she's at all with with people. I think she's fine. Yeah. That, yeah. Otherwise, we wouldn't have her up for adoption. She's soft. Oh, she's very soft. She's very soft. She's very nice. <laughs> she's half price. She's half price. She is cute. She is very cute. Not the mic. Alta will get very upset. Okay. Okay. All right. You need more? Is that it? You want to do one more? You want do a nice guy? Okay. Some of those. Oh, all right. <laughs> Good. Yeah, that dog princess. I was working with her with two small dogs Which approaching. Is princess? This one. That one. Here. And she was the same way as she was with Strider, even with a small dog. Yeah. But but in in defense of what you say, sometimes yeah. But this is more uh, of you know. Uh, Oh, uh, th this is mine. So it really has nothing to do with him, per se. Yeah, I, I actually find it interesting that in the original introduction, she was very conflicted. In fact, I thought she was conflicted all the way through. Yes. She'd never yes. quite figured out. She didn't, she didn't want Strider around, but at the same time, she wanted to love you. And then, and then when they were first meeting, she got herself into a state but she didn't get aggressive. So this is a dog that probably could be worked with because she is not no. vested in the behavior. No. And she's no. pretty young. We didn't show how old she is, but I think she's about nine, ten months old. And now, she would you? I don't think you'd, you'd ever get it gone. No, no, I don't think so. And she did back off. You know, she didn't take the offense and go forward. You know, her choice was just to back off. Once she was on the ground, when I said, get off my lap then, if you're going to growl, her choice was to sort of slink away and hide away like a cat, too. She may put me wrong, but I think it's... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. so funny how it started. She got so silly so fast. <laughs> I didn't expect it. Down low, coming in nice low greeting. Ears. Poor Strider. <laughs> he says, I'm 10. <laughs> well, if 
Sore frustration. Cray. Still staying low though. Very nice. Do you know? God, what a high pitched bark. Man. Hey, 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 hey. Chill. Good. But it gets around, got a, very aroused there, and immediately went, went mouth on, like frustration, biting the leash, put, put her mouth on me. Not a lot of impulse control. No, yeah, not much impulse control at all. So you see what I was talking about with vocalization, how that can really go one way or other. Social dogs don't, they're, they're not that vocal, not like this. And you can see him, he's like, oh, I hope, she's not going to come near me again. Okay. <laughs> Screaming women. <laughs> Woo, okay. In come on, Trisha. <laughs> So much for the nice dog. Yes. <laughs> I'm consistent. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, straight ahead. Any final questions? Yes, so we're here. Oh, hang on one second. We're just going to get the mic. I'm sorry. What about that dog with the Ridgeback? I mean, they were very high energy. Oh, that dog with the Ridgeback, that could end up... It could go one way or the other. They'll either, I think they'll play really, really rough, uh -huh. and it could switch over because she's got no impulse control. And the Ridgeback, you notice the Ridgeback, after the Ridgeback got a little comfortable, I have a feeling the Ridgeback would immediately jump all over her, too. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that she would accept that. She actually started to bite at you right away. Yeah. Pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't, I don't think I'd pair, pair the two of them up together. I think that could be an accident waiting So to what's a good grouping for that dog that we just saw? For the Catahoula? The, hmm. yeah. Whatever, yeah, the dog we just saw. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, well, probably tie your okay. leg back. <laughs> <laughs> hobble the dog. Give her a hobble. I, I would put her, I'd put her with several adult dogs. Several adult, yeah, social dogs. And I would, I would again, I would tire her out too. Yeah. You know, just uh, so they're not over the top when they start, just like I did with the puppies earlier. You know, start off quietly. You might want to bring them up. But many times what we do is we bring them up like one step forward, lie down, one step forward to each other, lie down. So they can kind of see, see how they are when they're lying down. Can you lie down next to a dog without going crazy? So the aim isn't necessarily to have them playing with a dog that's necessarily similar to them and get worn out from playing, it's more teaching them how to play correctly. So it would yeah. be pairing them with a dog that's going to teach them something. Right. Okay. Right. I like that. It's a good, yeah, that's Thank good. <laughs> In the back. Do you think your gentle leader may work? Do I, do I think the gentle leader would work? I don't think it would work on that dog. Any of them? Um, hmm. I think no. it would frustrate them. I think it would frustrate them. I don't think it would. I, you know, it works better on puppies than it does these adolescent type dogs. That's what I found. Okay. Was there another question? Does someone have their hand up? Can I have a comment? Sure. I, I, I think that an awful lot of owners, guardians, um, <laughs> are... <laughs> 
<laughs> I just have trouble with that. It's, it's been, been, I'm too old, I guess. Um, an, an awful lot of owners want their dogs to go to daycare to be worn out. Yeah. That's what their goal is, so that they come home and they're like old dogs. You know, <laughs> say, so come home and lie by the fire. And essentially, they're like greyhounds when you get right down to it, because that's what greyhounds are like. Yeah. You know, they, they do something and then they lie down. And personally, I don't like that. No. I really don't like that. I think that um, you have a dog, you should be doing something with the dog. You don't send it away to get it worn out and then come back because you're worn out from work and you don't have time for anything and you're just sitting there with the dog and you want the dog to put its head on your lap and you have no relationship. Mm -hmm. And I know you've probably had consults like I've had consults where the owner has no relationship with the dog. The dog's relationship is with the daycare owner. Yeah. Because that's where they get their reinforcement. And, and fun. So Back the to more the fun. we can educate people that they're supposed to get fit too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, the better off we're going to be. Yeah. And I, I also think that that's the, the worst use of dog parks. Yeah. Where dog parks are, are just to wear out dogs. Yes. And it's, uh, it's, it's not appropriate. Yeah. We, we had a, a couple come to Romp and Rovers and uh, <clears throat> Saturday it was, it just about, it, was, it was just about to start to rain. And, uh, we, and it was supposed to lightning and thunder as well. I said, we have to cancel it. Well, my dog hasn't gotten exercise today, and this is his exercise. Well, if you'd like to stay out in the lightning and thunder underneath a tree and exercise your dog, fine. But I'm not going to ask other people to do that. But I thought it was a very interesting comment that they were very upset that I was going to cancel that hour. Okay, so, that it was, so they really, you could see, they used that hour and it made me wonder, is that the only hour that that dog gets a week, too? Could be. Could be if they were that upset, which is really unfair to the dog. And that's why I think so many dogs are so out of control when they come here because that is, maybe it is once a week. You know, so they might have good play skills if they play more often, if they play with their owners more often, if they're tired. But so maybe their play skills are not good because they're they're just out of their minds. You know, it's just like a kid that you know who, who never ever goes to the candy store and is brought into a candy store for the first time. You know, they're they're just out of control. They haven't learned the manners or learned how to uh, you know appropriately uh, interact with other dogs. And I think that's why in Europe too. Um, you know, they're out with other dogs all the time. You know, restaurants, and they're walking the streets with other dogs, and they're very relaxed around other dogs because they really socialize their dogs. Good question. I just wanted to say that I, um, having worked at a boarding facility that had daycare, that it isn't always dogs don't go home tired because they were exercised, but they've spent the day just being stressed out, and they can't Great relax. Point. You know, Great we would... Point. we tried, you know, we were conscientious to match up the groups, but in between the play when they're back in their kennels, or even when they're out in the play group, they didn't want to play. They yeah. were avoiding or hiding and just sitting, and they're not relaxed mentally or physically. And then when they go back in the kennel, the noise level, uh -huh. and, you know, it's not home, I don't want to be here. They leave, yeah, they go home, and they're just like, oh, God. And uh that's They're, a very good you know. point because I just did a consultation with um, a boarding kennel in in Ohio on this, and we were I, we were doing these types of exercises. I was helping them see to read, see if we could match dogs up, and we couldn't find many good matches because they were already stressed from being in that environment. You know, they they the the families were on vacation; they were there, so. You know, I, I, I let them know these are probably not the types of dogs that you're going to see coming into daycare who are dropped off and picked up versus those that are being boarded and then with, with daycare. Because you're, you're absolutely right. They, they have a level of stress, and that's what's exhausting them, too. Mm, good point. There's, a, there's another thing that, that, ha that seems to happen with, um, with nowadays with our, with our animals. And, and I think that's that... Um, it was 17,000 years ago or up to 100,000 years ago that dogs chose people. Mm. That means they chose people over their own species. So socialization should be predominantly with the species that they chose, 
not the species that they were born into. Mm. And we have lost sight of that in this country. We have lost sight of the fact that dogs are our companions. They're not other dogs' companions. Yeah, I have, we have four dogs, but each one of those four dogs would rather be with yep. Trisha or me than would ever want to be with each other. Absolutely. And I think that, that ha we have <laughs> lost sight of that. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's very difficult for people to, to believe it. But they, that's what we did. We take them at the eight weeks of age. They're here. They're ours. That's who they should be interacting with yeah. more than with each other. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very much so. But that's, that, and that's a difficult thing to convince pet owners, too. Because especially, you know, when they've got multiple dogs, they've got that second dog for the dog. You know, not so much because they want, because they have extra time to spend with a second dog. It's you, usually the average pet owner. We have multiple dogs because, all of us, because we're pet professionals. And we like to be with our dogs. And we can't say no. Yes, right. <laughs> So, yeah, it's, it's, it is very different, but I, I totally agree with Trish on that. Yes? Um, yeah, I, I work for a um, boarding facility, and um, we offer, um, they pay for extra play periods, and we offer it, and we stress to the people that we gear it to the needs of the animal. Excellent. And a lot of times, um, it'll just be, they'll get much more out of just a one-on-one -on -one walk Absolutely. or just laying in the play yard and being massaged and yep. talked to. And then the owners will pick up the animal and get very upset. And why weren't they in a play group? And why blah, 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 blah. And, and it, you just have to just explain to them that it's what the animal needs. It's mm -hmm. not always a play group. It's not all I, what they need. It's excellent. So, and, excellent. But it's really hard to get this point through to people. Yeah, and it goes back to this point. We've lost touch with what I, I, I totally, I, I totally agree with you on that because it, it, it is important with our shelter dogs. They spend a lot of time with our volunteers, um, being walked, being trained, and then what we did, we did start some play groups th there. But the play groups occur after they have been tired, they've been worked mentally, they've had uh, physical contact. Uh, with, with human beings, so they're not so amped up when they start their play groups, and it's it's much much better that way. And again, it's always one on one. We don't do them in large groups. It's just it's one on one. It's two dogs at all, and for very brief periods of time. And we're in there with them. Okay, the volunteers are in there with them, and it, it, it's very interesting because they know that they get out of their kennel runs to you know get positive training, lots of treats, playing. That we, we we teach them tug as well in the kennels. They do go back, and they they would like to rather be with their people, you know, regardless. So that's nice. Question. I kind of wanted to tie on to that and another thing that I think we've forgotten in the dog park mentality that we have is that not every dog is going to be okay in a play setting with other dogs and we get I get owners who are like well I'm a failure or my dog's a bad dog because they can't play and I think we need to educate people that that's okay that you know as long as your dog is you know safe with you and your family and you've got the time to exercise and play with them it's okay if they're not okay in a dog park yeah I would I never bring my husband out in public ever <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow <laughs>